Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the warehouse. So today, we have a box of magical mysteries here. We're going to work on the sound effect generator, or that Jetson sound effect thing I was talking about. I think the battery died. Did I turn it off? So we've got this thing. We got a bunch of optocouplers, which are set up with a little, well, they're set up to run on up to 30 volts. And then we've got, for testing purposes, this thing, which a Ryobi One battery slots right into. And then it allows you to have an output on it. We got some knockoff Chinese Wago connectors, hot glue fuses, a few other random things. So the plan here today is to take this little board right here and get it connected up to my chair so that it will play whatever's recorded on this little MP3 player as soon as the chair starts moving. And we're basically gonna integrate it into the brake circuit using this optocoupler board here. You may be wondering why I'm doing this. Well, it's kind of a proof of concept. One, I think it would be hilarious for my chair to make those sound effects and or maybe have some theme music as I'm running around and then it cuts off as soon as I stop. But the main thing is power soccer. The power soccer chairs are set up with a very high motor compensation rate. They handle a lot of power, everything gets really hot. So they have to run cooling fans on them. The problem is there's a little toggle switch to turn those fans on and off. And it's real easy to forget to turn those fans on and then things will overheat. And conversely, it's really difficult to remember to turn them off and then your chair batteries get ruined because fans will run them down to zero volts. I may have done that once on my chair. I turned them on and left them on for three months. Now you could put a toggle switch on there that has a light on it, which I've actually purchased some of those. But I was thinking having it completely automated would be cool. So we're gonna test this out using this little board. Now obviously warranties and all that, whatever. I'm, I do all my own work on my chair and I'm not worried about warranties and I'm not gonna be damaging anything with what I'm doing here. And if I do, eh, I've got parts to fix it and I've got other chairs. So don't recommend this, it's more of a proof of concept or something funny for you guys to watch. So we're basically going to just connect this to the brake circuit, but before we do that, I've got this little guy here. This is a Ryobi 18 volt battery, nominal. Uh, actually, I'm not sure what the nominal voltage is, but it should be enough to power this up and test the optocoupler and uh, see how it works, which by the way, this thing has two of them on there and you can switch the ground triggering and whatnot. These have uh, some resistors built in so they can operate on a bunch of different voltages. Anywho, I'm gonna get some of this stuff put together here and set up and then we're gonna test this out and make sure that these two things will actually control each other. We're basically just needing to short these two wires together. So I think that's well within the margin of what this thing can handle. Okay, test number one. How much power does this put out? And are these red and green wires polarity correct on this random barrel jack that I got from overseas? So I have modified this thing a little bit and also broken it. It came with a light that allows you to turn it on and off, but I took this case apart so many times that I broke that button. So we have two USB ports and then I installed this switch right here, which allows us to turn on the output, I think maybe to the USBs, but most importantly, this barrel jack. This is not for charging, is it off? Yeah. This is for getting power out of the thing. So let's go ahead and we've got a multimeter set up here to DC volts and I've got these little alligator clips set up on the leads. So let's see what our voltage is and check the polarity. Power on. Eh. Oh, I set it to volts AC, whoops. There we go. So we've got 20.14 volts out. And this power chair is gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 25 to 27 volts, maybe closer down to 24 when under operation. So uh, that seems good. And our polarity is correct. Then we're going to wire this up to the input here. Okay. This does not have the preferable rising clamp terminals, but for this application will be fine. Okay, now it is in fact connected. Test number two, does hitting this thing with the voltage make it explode? 
Never sure with the ratings on listings for things, so let's see what happens here. Yeah, we have a light. I didn't know I had an LED. That's actually pretty cool. Awesome. So now all we need to do is cut this little wire and then basically stick it in our outputs here and see if this little chip is able to do what I think it can do. Polarity shouldn't matter since all we're doing is completing a circuit. I'm trying to limit my use of the word in theory because it keeps triggering my phone and Siri keeps thinking I'm talking to her. Oh boy, these connectors are not very good. They're getting all twisted out of shape. I'll just stuff these in here. Okay, turn this back on. Doesn't seem to be triggering, that's good. Took it up to power. Hit it with 20 something volts. Hey, hey. Now you can change the programming on this thing. So it should play it once and then stop. I believe you can set it up so that it will continually play the sound until the trigger is removed. I will link this little board down below. It's fairly cheap on Amazon. It's actually an MP3 player and you configure it with a text file that is on its little storage thing. I forget how many megabytes of storage it has. It's not that much. Yes, megabytes. So let's turn this off and back on. Oh, turning it off also triggered it. Interesting. So I did notice, so I did notice as this thing turns off, our LED fades out. So we've apparently got some, I'm bad with terminology, capacitance or something in here that's storing power. Oh, maybe it's on this end, actually here. Let's check. Ah, okay, I figured it out. So I do have these USB boards in line with this switch. So what's happening when I turn this off, the power from the power converter and the capacitors in here is bleeding through and triggering it again, are making the voltage, you know, slowly fade out, and that's what's double triggering it. So there you can see it triggered. But now we can simulate how it's gonna be on the chair, and I'll just unplug this. There, it didn't trigger. So, yeah, that answers my question. I do have these USB ports set up on this here switch. Interesting note. I'll have to remember that when I'm using this for testing other things. I'm also gonna get one of those little variable like D-Rock power supply things and mount it on this. So I've got a little screen to show the voltage and a knob to adjust the voltage. I'm saying voltage a lot. Anyways, cool little thing. We'll also link this down below. Okay, at this point, I think it's time to pull a backup chair over here in case I ruin this one and flop onto the floor and see if we can get this thing wired up. I've got these little um, lever style quick lock Wago knockoffs. I was thinking about maybe using these for testing, but I don't know. I'm gonna get inside the chair and see what it looks like. The idea is I would like to leave the wiring on the chair pretty much alone. Well, I don't wanna pass it through anything. I wanna leave it connected and then have another wire that comes off that maybe connects to one of these things so we can add stuff later or whatever. But anyways, uh, let's reconvene on the floor. Welcome to the floor. So our backup chair of choice today is the 2018 M3 in a fetching orange color, as Big Clive would say. I don't think we're gonna need it, but it's handy to have here. I just pulled the covers off this thing and I realized something. There would have been a much easier way to do this. See these little white connectors right here? One here and one here. Those are our brake connections. So it would have been far cleaner and or easier to just get some of those connectors and make a plug-in pass-through instead of chopping up the wiring. But since I am me and we are here and this is taken apart, we're just gonna chop the wiring. Um, yeah, anyways, research, science. Um, once again, this is for soccer chair stuff and other things because, because there's a lot of interesting mods and stuff you can do that, was that? That was unlatched. There's a lot of interesting mods and other things you can do with a control signal from the brakes because that's the one main output that you can access easily with a couple of wires that tells you when the chair is in motion. Huh, the bus just paged me. It's 54 degrees in there. 
time to turn on the pellet stove. Next up on our journey of destruction, we're going to test and see what the brake voltage actually is on this chair. I can't remember on the permobile. Some chairs, they are 12 volt brakes and some chairs, they are 24 volt. And in the case of Quantum and some Invicares, the model of the chair makes a difference. And I don't feel like looking at the software. So we're just going to back probe these things real quick and see what we are getting. Which now that I'm realizing the joystick's like all the way over there, so that's going to be annoying to reach. But let's uh, back probe these heifers and uh, see what we get. Okay, those should be connected. Let's turn this to DC volts this time. And I wonder if there's a stick or something around here I can use to hit the joystick on this chair from here. Um, fresh out of grabber sticks. Uh, hang on, I'm just going to have to shimmy over there. I just remembered we have a secret weapon as he points the camera at the lights on the ceiling. We have armrests and a swing away. Er, come here, you. Ah, there we go. Now I can easily ish reach that. Okay, multimeters in frame. So the way this system works is when you're stopped, the brake coils are not powered up at all. But the chair is in fact monitoring what's going on in that circuit to see if there's any errors or other things going on. So I don't know what the idle voltage is going to be and or if the voltmeter is going to screw with that, but let's turn it on and see. Okay, power on. Huh. So there's 24 volts while we're sitting here. That's odd. Um, let me bump the joystick. Oh, hang on. One mitigating factor. I had the brakes, I had the brakes turned off. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. Okay, let's power it back up. Okay, interesting note. So this might pose a problem. Okay, so what just happened? I had the brakes off because I have stealth mode turned on in this chair. And that's the same setup that the soccer chairs use. You turn off the brakes when you're in operation to, um, well, it basically generates less heat and it allows you to do stop and move, stop and start maneuvers a lot faster. But when those are off, it's hitting the switches and giving us a constant 24 volts. Right now, we just have like a nominal 20 millivolts. Yeah, 20 millivolts right now, which I don't know. I don't know if that's enough to trigger this or not. So anyways, um, let's hit the joystick and we should get voltage. Yeah, so 23 volts to the brake. So they are in fact 24 volt. I'm just wondering though, if this 24 millivolts is gonna be enough to trigger this thing. It might be. Well, that's why we're testing this. Okay, um, let me turn this back off. Disconnect these. Okay, well, let me go through and figure out the best way to like hook this up and test it because there's not a lot of room back here and I don't exactly want wires hanging out of the back of my chair. Um, this is the connector for the rear lights. And by the way, the rear covers on these things, look how thin that plastic is. Did that break already? I don't think it did, but these hook around right here and I'm just, I, I really hope in whatever Permobile releases next that they they do something about all these plastics and these like accents that just like fall off in a slight breeze and everything, you know. I did wind up using black hot glue on this accent color on my chair. I went with the black, so this would normally be another color. Like, if your chair was like that one and it was orange, this colored piece right here would be orange as well. But the hot glue, the black hot glue seems to be kind of working on this, but yeah. Anyways, um, let me figure some stuff out and I'll be right back. What I've done is basically interface with this connector down here and I got a bunch of, let's see, where did it go? I got a bunch of this really nice, um, what is this, 24 gauge silicone stranded wire. So super high quality. And what I did was basically peel these two wires up here. I removed a little bit of the sheathing so I didn't actually cut the wires. And I took the silicone wire, stripped it, pushed it through, wrapped it around, soldered it in place. It's all tied up and everything. And the way this is set up currently, you can still unplug this cable and unhook everything and service the chair. Then I took these two knockoff uh, Wago connectors 
right here is where the connect module used to be and there was this little foam block left over from that that I hadn't taken off. The problem is when the cover goes on here, it's basically touching right here. So we don't have a whole lot of room to mount everything. But I got little three terminal blocks just because they were a little bit bigger and had more room to be glued on. Used the black hot glue. Sorry, is this flickering? Um, but I used the black hot glue to attach these, ran the wire in, and now we've got one output on each side so we can connect up whatever we need to. I haven't yet figured out exactly where I'm gonna put this module. The speaker is obviously not very loud and there isn't much amplification. So if it's underneath the plastic covers, you may not be able to hear it. But once again, this is just kind of a proof of concept. We can use these signal wires in this optocoupler, maybe get a different amplifier, different soundboard or whatever and figure something out. But for right now, we're just gonna hook it up and make sure it actually works. Let's go ahead and power on our chair here. Make sure we're not getting any errors on the screen, which we wouldn't anyways because I've disabled the error reporting on this controller for the brake circuits. But let me hit the uh, um, joystick and see what happens here. Okay, so we still, oops, we still seem to have normal-ish function. Excellent. There is, however, one thing I was just thinking about as I was wiring this up. So in case you're wondering, just on a side note, Shorting those two wires together has no negative effect. Those two wires do two things. They basically send power to the brake coils. And also when you flip the brake release lever, there's a micro switch in there that shorts those two wires together. So shorting them out is actually part of its intended function. So we don't have to worry about fusing or accidentally shorting things or whatever. It'd be preferable not to short them to the chassis. In theory, the entire chassis is isolated from the control system. Wheelchairs are not like cars. The chassis is not ground, and you do not want it grounded. That is how you let the magic smoke out of things. But like I was saying, when that magnetic field in the coil collapses, I think we're gonna get an inherent voltage spike. So I'm not 100% sure if that's going to blow up our optocouplers. I do have the oscilloscope sitting right over here, but I don't currently have it set up it would be the perfect thing to test for this. I don't think my multimeter has enough counts or uh, can just measure a voltage spike that actually does this have a min max on it? Range, relative, data hold. Yeah, there's no min max function on this one. Actually, I have another meter. Let's try and hook this up real quick and see if we're getting any voltage spikes that any meters I have can count without using the scope. All right, so I've got this other meter here. I'm just using the clamp as a mount. I'm not measuring current or anything like that. It only claims it samples three times a second. So I don't know if it's gonna get us anything useful, but let's take a look here at the screen and see if we can measure any sort of voltage spikes. So let's turn on the chair. Okay, we've got our 20 millivolts. Let's hit the brakes and release. So it went up to 23. Let's see if I can gently... Yeah, I'm not... I can't tell. I would assume there's some sort of circuitry inside the controller to prevent it from blowing things up. And we are basically just set up in parallel with that, so... Anyways, I think at this point we're just going to connect up our uh, optocoupler here and see if this 20 millivolts is enough to inadvertently trigger it or not. So, um, yeah, let's do that. Interesting side note. Sorry, it's sideways. It's hard to get the light angles. Chair's on right now. We've got our 20 millivolts. Let me turn off the chair. Our voltage slowly bleeds off. So that tells me they've got some sort of smoothing circuitry or something in there to deal with those spikes coming from the magnetic fields and the coils collapsing. Okay, phase 27 of testing. Our optocoupler is now wired up. I did actually check the polarity of this circuit, so it's uh, not going in here backwards. We're gonna turn on the chair, and I'm pretty sure we'll see a light come on as the chair first powers up, but will it turn off? I don't know if 20 millivolts is too much, so here we go, powering on. Okay, light blinked, and now it is off. Excellent. So let's go ahead and bump our brakes. Yep, and our red light matches the click. 
Excellent. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was going to work. Um, again, I think we're relying on whatever smoothing is going on inside there to take care of the voltage spike. However, this thing is paralleled in before all that. So, um, electronics and stuff. I don't know. Cool. Well, uh, since we're here, let's go ahead and plug our little sound module in. Okay, that guy's plugged in now. We should get audio when I... Actually, is this thing on? I don't even know. Well, we'll just hit the, we'll hit the brakes and see what happens. Cool, it works. Definitely not very loud. The speaker is also taped on here face down, which uh, is also a thing. Uh, huh. Proof of concept complete. I think this will work. I, let me turn off the chair. There we go. I'm going to stare at this for a little while and figure out how I want to mount all this stuff. Maybe play around with unsticking that speaker to see if it's a little bit louder. We do have a little bit of space, right, pointing with my nose, right here on the back of this cover that we could put a little project box or something like that. So, anyways, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to screw around with this for a little bit and then I'll be back when I figure something out. Well, I've gotten this thing put back together, and seeing as how it's just for testing purposes, I just kind of taped the modules on the back of the chair, just so I can film a couple of clips with it. As you can see, the chair is now reassembled, but we have these two random uh, PCBs just hanging out here. As it turned out, this little piece here was already cut out for the speaker, so we get a decent amount of volume out of that thing but I just electrical taped them on here right now so that I can film a couple of clips driving by with this thing because I think it sounds hilarious. Then I'm gonna pull this back off here before I head back. But um, once again, this was just kind of a prototype and testing thing. And I've learned some interesting stuff about the brake circuits on these chairs and how we're constantly getting 24 volts out of them. And I'm gonna use that information to apply it to the automatic fan circuitry that I'm working on for the Strike Force chairs. Anyways, I'm gonna hop back into this thing and we're gonna run around and uh, see if it makes me laugh. I'm not gonna lie, this would get annoying very, very quickly. I think what I'm gonna do right now, since I still have everything all set up here, <laughs> is I'm gonna try the theme music option. <laughs> There's like, some tuba music or something like that. Um, I'm gonna load that on here real quick and see, but for right now, it um, definitely gets annoying in a hurry. But it does seem to work pretty well. <laughs> I, I forgot it was on there. I went to move and then... <laughs> Jetson's noises. Oh. Uh, I think when I edited the sound file, um, I just used Audacity on the computer. And I just linked a bunch of stuff together. I think it took a lot of the bass or something out of it, maybe. I do need to tune the sounds a little bit, but like... I keep forgetting it's there anytime I move. <laughs> There's a slight delay before it starts, but... Okay, this one's not quite as loud, but it's theme music. Um, let me show you. I think this particular song might be copyrighted, but just having random theme music following you around. <laughs> oh, anyways, I'm gonna EQ the Jetson sound so it works a little bit better on that little speaker, and then I'm gonna head back out to the bus, I think. Um, I wanna try and get this video out tonight. It's almost seven o'clock right now, but <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Stupid fun. So, <laughs> forgot about it. Hang on, I gotta stop. 
there's some campsites outside and I went out there to film that and their dogs immediately started barking. <laughs> uh, the best part is I just forget it's there and then I go to move and it's like... <laughs> I made it back to the bus. I'm working on editing this video. So I got to thinking, I, I sent the clips to a couple of friends. Did I put the... okay. For some reason I thought I didn't put the SD card in the camera but I'm already recording so obviously I did. I sent the clip to a couple of friends and they were like, you've got to set that up so it has the startup sound, then the running sound, and then it like fades out. And I got to thinking about that and I was like, actually yeah, I don't think that would be too hard to do. But then I remembered, I've got other projects we're working on. Like, oh actually, hang on, I was grabbing my notepad. Let me get something else real quick. I'm not saying I won't do a version 2 of the uh, sound effect Jetson's wheelchair mod thing, which it would be kind of fun to have that thing on a chair at the auto show, which, okay, hang on, one thing at a time. I say all that to say I know myself and there's other things I want to work on in the meanwhile, like I got some parts. This here is a joystick with a bunch of micro switches built in uh, there's one for each direction, so forward, back, left, and right. And I think... Oh, does it trigger diagonally? Okay, so we'll trigger diagonally. And a little red ball to put on there. But, I've ordered a bunch of parts, and I'm finally going to move forward with the Arnet remote control wheelchair project. The reason I bought this is because it has the micro switches. I've got a couple of Omnis. I've got an input-output module. I'll probably use an Omni because they're more readily available. And if people want to try and copy the project for a remote control wheelchair, um, it's a lot easier to get those on eBay and they're maybe 80 bucks as opposed to several hundred and non-existent in the case of the input-output module. But anyways, things coming up. As far as today, the optic coupler works. I've, I'll link all this stuff down below. If you're watching the video right as it's posted, um, it might take me a little bit to get all the links and stuff put in there so if you're not seeing them check back tomorrow but it works so a lot of interesting stuff we can do with that um, I'm rambling and there's a bunch of stuff rattling around in my head right now but I will say this Thursday which is in Tuesday Wednesday Thursday two days maybe one day or less as you're watching this the live stream will be at the 2023 Portland International Auto Show so Thursday 3 p.m. Pacific time we're gonna run around there. Hopefully it's more interesting this year than it was last year. But like I said in the last video, if you're in Portland and you wanna come say hi, I will be there every day of the event and we'll have a little power soccer area set up next to the wheelchair van vendor. Once again, I still don't know what the name of the company is, but uh, just come in there and ask for wheelchair vans and you'll probably see me wandering around somewhere if you wanna hang out. That sounds weird. Anyways, whatever. So, uh, thanks for hanging out today. It was awesome playing around with this project that I talked about, then forgot, and then finally got to. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed, and hopefully it made you laugh or something. So, anyways, I'll see you guys Thursday on the live stream for hopefully some excitement.